Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansour. I'm joined as always by my lovely, wonderful co-host, Alexander Voltz. Say hello. Oh. That was my first first time trying to do a Tom War- Warrior metal. <laughs> this is Every Album Ever, the podcast where we listen to every single album in the world, one artist at a time. That is a new discography, more or less, per episode. And today, as uh, Alex very subtly implied, we are talking about Celtic for us. Good God. Celtic Frost or Celtic Frost if you're from the East Coast. If you're from Boston. Yeah. You're fucking, <laughs> you're fucking New England fuck. That's mean. I don't know who they are. <laughs> Maybe they're good people. I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> you, wow. Man. <laughs> out the gate. This is not the first time you've bashed the fine people of Massachusetts, Alex. What was the first time? I don't remember, but I think it was involving the word Celtic again. You know, I'm just saying. Every time the word Celtic or Celtic comes up, you say "fuck Boston." You know, and I'm not. You can chuck the archives. I swear to God, this has happened at least once before. I believe you. I'm just saying, you got Boston, uh, Massachusetts. You got a garbage basketball team, and your football team's a bunch of cheaters, and you should be ashamed of yourself. I don't feel that way because I don't have any opinion towards sports. So you send your hate to this son of a bitch right next to me. Anyway, if you want to send any. <laughs> Any love or hate to Alex uh, or suggest an artist for us to talk about, talk about, bicker about, fight about, disagree about, like we usually do, send all that to every album ever at gmail.com. Come at me, you townies. Yeah, boy. Uh, <laughs> like, subscribe, share, uh, YouTube and the Spotify's and the iTunes and all the things. Tell a friend if you like us to, uh, or share our clips that we post and stuff. It's fall fun if, or if you want or not. Thank you. Anyway. Uh, also, you can uh, check out the Celtic Frost playlist on Spotify that we've put together. Uh, you can find it, uh, a link to that in the description of wherever you're listening or watching. And of course, uh, that link as well as uh, a playlist for every episode we've done is on everyalbumever.com. Fun stuff. Also, last thing. I keep forgetting all my plugs until, unless I look at a fucking uh, list in front of me with I all the plugs. Forget. I'm not, not in love anymore. anymore. <laughs> Sorry. That is our periodic Michael McDonald breakdown. Oh, that was stupid. <laughs> uh, Instagram, you can find me at Pope Jesse Ventura and Alex at Mother Puncture. And if you want to follow my personal music account where I post things uh, involving my music, where I put my music so you can shit on me instead of me. Well, it's 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 deserved, I think. Because I shit uh, on artists every week. It's an Ouroboros like situation. Yeah. And if you're an animal and you don't know what that is, it's a tail eating its own. It is a tail own. eating its own snake. Yep. Absolutely. Because I'm an animal <laughs> and I got tongue tied. You can find my, my music shit at Pander Monkey, P-A-N-D-E-R Monkey. Uh, okay. Celtic Frost. So out of the gate, they got five albums and one EP or one compilation of their okay. early stuff. Of two EPs. Two EPs, that's right. Uh, that came out in 1984. That's the first thing. And the last album came out in 2006. Uh, okay. Okay. I was excited for this because I have I had no experience with any of their music. I'm a big metal fan, as we know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a lot of friends in high school who loved this band. Uh, shirts all the time. Everyone had a fucking Celtic Frost shirt. Everyone pronounced it Celtic Frost in those days because they're uh, they were uneducated, uh, <laughs> and it was one, it was mostly associated with like the people more into black metal or death metal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just dismissed it as that because I wasn't into it too much th- at the time. And I was, for this, I was excited. Like finally, I'm gonna get a chance to hear this band, and uh, I finally concluded I don't like this band at oh. all. Oh yeah. uh, man. This is rough. <laughs> I I like them. You like do you like them? I, so we're gonna disagree a lot. Oh, we're gonna Fuck. disagree all the time <laughs> to the point where like I would li- I'd listen to them, but during this, I think they're one of at least in America, like I think in Europe they did get their due. I think they're one of the most underrated really metal acts ever. I'm so so blown away right now because i don't know what you heard i heard a lot i feel like i heard the same things you heard but my god did i not feel that way my personal experience i went like backwards for some reason i threw on uh cryptoconicon or whatever the the band tom warrior started in Uh, like the mid 2000s okay 
And for some reason, I stumbled upon that album and I was like, this is real good. Like Celtic Frost has to be amazing. And then I worked my way backwards Mm -hmm. and I was like a fan, but like the, the heaviness and how like, how far out there they were at the time of the recordings. Mm -hmm. I was just like, whoa, I do. Yeah. They're, they're credited as basically pioneering more black metal than death metal. All right. I think they just use uh, extreme metal because because I could see why both genres pull from them. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, like, it's not really either to yeah, me. It doesn't sound at all like black metal or, or death metal. Yeah. It's just, it's, at, uh, we'll get into it more when we talk about the albums, but it's very uh, inaccessible like them where the, the riffs are all very, very ugly. Get very, yeah, very are. dark band, very dark band. Straight and the, the vocals and everything is like, don't like us. <laughs> Please don't like us. That's what I felt like. I mean, that kind of like, before Celtic for us, he had a band called Hellhammer. Mm-hmm. And I know, it, I know the name. Why yeah, not? that was very much a like not designed to be popular. Very much like this is he said like a haven for our friends. Mm-hmm. Like so, even from like the get go, it, it was never like meant for people to like to, to like. Yeah, um, I do think there are harsher, more inaccessible metal bands. Like, I honestly, I honestly feel like this is like second tier. Like after you get into your Metallica's, your Slayer's, I think, I think you should move on to, to this band, to this band. Whoa, dude. So one of the first, uh, not the first big things that I took from this was like, well, we, we always talk about our death episode because it was such a fucking fun episode and we, we love that band so much. And how they pioneered an entire subgenre of metal. And I, how- I thought we were going to have that same bonding experience yeah, on this episode. Apparently not. Apparently not. Because the thing I, I took from that band was even if you're kind of into metal, you need to check out Death. And this one, as I thought, even if you're into metal, you're probably not going to like this. It's it, it, I, you got to be a, a fucking metal nerd to enjoy this. I shit. disagree. It's not like. It's not like mayhem or like dark throne. I think or- mayhem is far more interesting or not interesting, but like enjoyable and Damn. mayhem is not exactly enjoyable. Damn. I like mayhem. Uh, I don't love mayhem. And was it uh dark throne is like the one uh, shit. The one with the, the big three, the, the Holy Trinity, al- unholy Trinity albums, right? Uh, is yeah. that dark throne? Um, Whatever. There's three like pen and we're forgetting the third one. The third one is it's not Bergem, is it? Or Bootsum with uh, the murderer? Oh, uh, fuck that guy. Um, no. Nazi murderer. No, he was in Mayhem and then he did. Like, then he did Bergem after. Yeah. So Mayhem, Dark Throne, and oh my God, I'm so annoyed that I, people are going to be fucking angry, like yelling at my brother for sure. was like, you idiot. You, <laughs> he's a big black metal fan. But point is, uh, what the hell was I saying? Uh, about uh, how, nerds. how this is <laughs> like kind of inaccessible even for people. Yeah, because it's Mike's words, not mine. I I do think it's super inaccessible. Like those bands are harsher, but uh, they're like I don't, I you know I I am already stumbling over my own words. I just didn't like it. <laughs> That's just how because I don't know. It doesn't feel um, none of it felt very satisfying to me. Like it has some cool shit and it's it's interesting from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. It's always like oh this they don't stop doing things that I'm not expecting for mm-hmm. damn sure. Uh, I just think. Uh, Tom Gabriel, Tom Warrior, whatever you want to call him. Tom Warrior, that's it's, quite the name. That's, this, a, that's a fucking hilarious name. That's Dude, like a Tom rest, Warrior. Yeah, that's like a wrestler name. <laughs> yeah. Today's Tom Warrior, mean mean stride. Ding, 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 ding. Um, <laughs> yeah, he like when he's younger, he kind of looks like Gollum, and now he just looks like <laughs> ECW wrestler Raven. All right, let's a step up. <laughs> but yeah, he was this like. He's like, I got beat up every day in school and like, I didn't want, he, he's like being a little mellow dramatic, yeah. not about getting beat up, but he's like, I didn't want to make music like this. Like it, this came out of it me. It found me. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's. And he says it in like the scary, like Swiss, found me. S- Switzerland. Well, so where are they from? Uh, I believe Switzerland. Switzerland. See, I, I knew Scandinavia. 
Uh, in the last album, I, I could have sworn I thought I heard German. So, uh, but I, that's I knew kind that of could... close. Yeah, Switzerland. That's mm-hmm. why they're that's why they're friends with Giger. Giger, love. I'm a big <laughs> man. I popped the mic right there. I'm a big uh, HR Giger fan. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I'm severely mentally ill, which is why I enjoy him so much. <laughs> I'm not more, mentally ill, but more penises. Oh, it's such such fucking great art, though. <laughs> it's it's awesome. One, uh, one of the goats yeah. of drawing dicks. <laughs> the, I, I would say the, 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 goat, goat, the yeah. goat of dick drawing. Uh, no one draws black wieners the way this man does. No, not even God. So, okay. So from Switzerland, when did they form? You said after, well, uh, Hellhammer was first. When did Hellhammer form? In 81. Uh-huh. And uh, Warriors kind of said like, yeah, we were, we were kind of shitty. And he's like, um, but like, he's been shit on his whole life. So he didn't think much of it yeah. at first. And then he kind of realized like, okay, like this needs to go in a level that obviously this band's not prepared for. And we've had so much bad press. Like, no, I think maybe metal blade was interested in them. And then mm-hmm. like metal magazines, everybody was just like this is the stupidest, the worst, really the worst band ever. And then so he started Celtic Frost, which... Uh, he wear a fake mustache while he was in it, too? <laughs> no, but um, he was this kind of like, yeah, you know, you. we were so limited in Hellhammer. And even though Hellhammer got back together for a little bit a mm-hmm. uh, few years ago. And um, yeah, so it was this like he knew he could get to that next level, but just not in Hellhammer. So he did Celtic frost. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, so interesting. He doesn't even really like cite metal as influences. Like he's like, he was more into punk because punk gave him like the, the do it yourself attitude mm-hmm. because if he didn't have that, he, Oh yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't get anywhere. Uh, he motorhead, uh, Bauhaus and sisters of mercy. Those are like his big and the outcomes, the most earliest instance of extreme metal. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) it's, it's crazy. It's crazy to me. Not so much the EPs, but when they start doing albums, holy, it gets real zany. My God, I'm excited to talk about these and it's not going to (laughs) be. be gushing that's for damn sure i am oh boy i'm gonna get the vapors oh let's do it then all right let's kick it off uh 1984 morbid tales like if you had tom mariah's vocal this is just thrash yeah (laughs) I do hear like the motorhead. Yeah. Something about his voice uh, around these albums, like or this early stuff. He just sounds like a dude sound, trying to sound gruff. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't really sound gr- gruff. He sounds like a skinny dude trying to sound gruff. It's funny. <laughs> okay, let's talk. It's kind of a stereotypical metal voice, but it's also not like I think by now, like today's standards, it I, seems like, oh, he's just trying to yeah, like metal it up. I think people have like gone and kind of twisted or evolved what um, what they laid down. But yeah, like th- by today's standards, this is about as regular metal as it gets. Yeah, it's. Even then, there's still like a lot of different genres the album touches on. Like, I feel like it's a little, it's a little sludgy. So, uh, I feel like you're you're probably referencing uh, Procreation of the Wicked. Did you look at my notes? I did not. But <laughs> I fucking love that song. So do I. Uh, and I always introduced that song when I was like ten years old, maybe younger, by Sepultura covering it. Oh shit! And they have a really good cover of it. It's even sludgier. It's even more. <laughs> Well, there's like a guitar riff on there where I'm like, that sounds like the Melvin's uh, song, Amazon. Uh, and it's yeah, just yeah. like... Yeah. Yeah. Put on a little bit of that motherfucker. That's a Dude. good ass... Like, cause, ah, oh, man, it's a good song. Like, I, didn't, I forgot that it was by Cubs Frost. There it is. No, when, when the... 
After this, it changes slightly and it gets more Melvin Z. But that's the riff I'm talking yeah. about. Go right here. After hit, after this one. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it goes down a, a, a couple keys. Yeah, this yeah. fucking song is amazing. Oh, it's so fucking good, man. God damn. See, I love that song and I love I wish there was more on that uh, like that, but it's mostly like thrashy. Well, I think uh, I don't know if he's always had the mentality, but I know he's not like a fan of like, uh, have you ever heard the term riff salad? Uh, where like, uh, let's say like Dillinger Escape Plan is a riff salad band where it's just fucking all the time, all the time. So that's like that's similar to Death Metal Syndrome. What I what I talk about but with with uh, Dillinger, it's even harder to follow even less even less riff more it's like a constant shifting solo yeah well yeah he's just not a fan of that he he'll always pick um because he's like it's called heavy metal it's not called fast metal and even though there is speed metal now there there is is speed metal but At at the time of this there was speed metal yeah but he's like at its core it is heavy. All right. Metal. All right. Mr. Purist over here. Mr. Fucking Gollum Purist. That's he, mean. I see. Like, I kind of agree with him. Like, he refused to like, uh, I think he has like a story where he could have watched like the Black Sabbath reunion, but he's like, Bill Ward's not there. I'm not doing it. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Wait. Wait. Why? Because it's not Black Sabbath. Without Bill Ward. Yeah. I guess. I mean, he. He is pretty paramount to the sound, but he's not the only thing. Par- ah, whatever. That's yeah, that, yeah, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, he is, he's he, a purist. Yeah, yeah, he is a purist. Uh, it's funny about the, the the heaviness you're talking about because these songs are written heavy. They're probably performed heavy, and it, they are not produced heavy. And it's it is wimpy as fuck. There's like no low end. The bass is just sounds like a, a thin guitar mm-hmm. more than anything else, uh, which is really disappointing, especially on tracks like Procreation, where it's the heaviest riff you can ever hear yeah i just i don't know i chalk it up like to being in switzerland and in poor. the 80s yeah. and poor yeah for well. sure no that's that's definitely it uh but it, it still hurts the album or compilation yeah, or whatever yeah. this is uh yeah this is so it's the morbid tales ep and then the emperor's return e but emperor's return ep so any modern version anything streaming you'll see with morbid tales on it also includes Emperor yes. Return. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, fucking dance macabre. Dude, the That's intro the fuck- is ridiculous. It's a fucking like, I'm like, is this like leftover audio from like a Clive Barker movie? It's ridiculous. It's insane. A lot of it, like, the, there is not too much. It's on that track, but it's not too much of it on this entire release where it's He's, tr- he's trying to sound, make make evil sounding things like that that don't exactly qualify as songs, mm-hmm. really. But like, you know, we're just gonna make an evil track here. Yeah, they do that later <laughs> a lot. But the emphasis on uh trying to be evil is not that bad on here. No, it's I don't just even mostly thrash. That's kind of heavier. I don't even think it's kind of like like arguably they've like laid the groundwork for. You know what? I'm gonna save that comment for another. El- when we get to another album, but all right, all right. return to e- return to Eve. Is that the like very first, I think like Celtic frost did the very first. Oh, like the metal, like do it, put it, Oh man, I didn't time stamp it. God damn it. Alex. The thing he does in like almost every song, uh-huh. but, uh, I'm like, did, cause now it's like, Ooh. so all oh, that. Ooh. Yeah, dude, that's a super, that's a dancing thing. Yeah, now every now every like so many bands do it, but I'm like, was this one of the like first early? I don't know when Danzig started doing it because I I know that it's a Danzig thing for sure. Well, he could have got it from the punk punk uh, scene. Thing, thing is, uh, I don't think I've heard Danzig do it with the Misfits. I heard a lot with Danzig the band. Mm. Uh, ooh, it's it's hilarious. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool though. <laughs> no, now it's like now it's like real standard. Yeah. But to me, that's like a trademark, like Tom Warrior. Fascinating, fascinating thing. Yeah. Um, I will say shout out to the other the other two main members. There's kind of like a revolving door throughout the albums, but like the other two main members are Martin Eric Ian, 
A I N. Mm-hmm. He's the bass player, and Reed St. Mark are the drums. Um, they're not on every album, but that is like the closest thing to a classic line. Yeah, yeah, they do come back a lot of the times. All right, all right. Uh, I I still think it's <clears throat> it, it it's kind of if you enjoy like Exodus's first album or or uh, I. <sighs> Is it, like it's hard it's a it's a very specific kind of thrash where like later when it gets to like 87 88 years thrash got way more technical and faster mm-hmm. but like you know, like megadeth's first album like 80, this perfect around this time period like 84 85 where it was still fast but not like over the top solos all over the place mm-hmm. it's like it's just if you like that you like this and uh it's it's very similar to that except it's just heavier it's heavier um and it's so bizarre to me that Procreation is on that because that doesn't sound that's like to me a total pioneering track because the rest of it sounds like oh it's just like a lower a, a down tuned thrash album yeah it's a little like a dirtier thrash yeah yeah it's gruffer for sure um, but well you gotta that, crawl before you can walk yeah yeah I mean other than that it, uh, it's fine I don't I don't I did not hate it did not I'm not going back to it for damn sure uh, except for the one track that I keep talking about over and over again uh but let's move on to the first actual album this is 1985 to megatherion there it is there it is This is so ugly. I love it. It's good. No, it's good, but it's it's so ugly. No, I know you use ugly as kind of like a, yeah, and it's almost a, yeah, it's almost a compliment. See, I think I think if they had different vocals, yeah, I think they would be more a pr- like would have caught on. And would have been up there with the Metallicas and the Slayers. The vocals in this band are fucking awful from beginning to end. I really... I disagree. I hate I disagree. it. Dude, I don't like them. On this album, they make me laugh. They're so cartoony, dude. No, there are... Car- I will say there are cartoony things. Um, And then... So, yeah, we got the, the Giger uh, cover with very minimal penis influence on it. That is actually... Pretty. I mean, there's still a lot of phallic things happening. Oh yeah, those snake uh, things are vi- very phallic. But outside of that, like it's uh, a good cover. Yeah, it's, it's a, a really good. I mean, anything with Giger, man. I like, I and yeah, uh, I don't know if he was like a fan of everyone who he he did art for. Like he didn't Emerson Lake and Palmer yeah, cover. Right. Uh, but he was a, like a supporter. Really. Of- he was a Celtic Frost fan? Yeah. That's hilarious. It makes up. Well, duh. The man said he had like dreams of hell. Dude, when you look and sound like gear, <laughs> of course you're going to listen to Celtic Frost. <laughs> um, and yeah, also, I think like the Switzerland connection. Yeah, of course. Like made them feel a little closer. This album, uh, it definitely hit me more that this is ridiculously heavy for 85. This album is so... It's not as innovative as other things, but it's still pretty fucking innovative to me. Um, like, there's nothing catchy about it. No, no. It's just not at all. Fucking dark corner of the music world. It's a gauntlet of wrong, purposefully, purposefully wrong notes, uh, dissonant progressions, ugly changes, uh, and oh. everything evil. Everything evil. Also, I realize listening back to some podcasts for some reason I like reference music to video games. So I'm gonna, this is the Bloodborne <laughs> of music. Bloodborne is the best game ever made. If it's game fucking <laughs> horrifying. There's nothing relaxing about it, but it's so good. It's intense too. Like, uh, fuck yeah, I love Bloodborne. But Jesus, man, like, there's parts of this. Uh, where I, I do appreciate a lot of the ugliness for it being interesting, like the 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 decision to play something that that you know sounds off putting, yeah, because because it's off putting is cool to me. I like that. I don't enjoy it. I uh, audibly. I uh. I should have played the intro track, but dude, I c- 
Put on okay. the edge because that's on I my notes. Uh, it was a holy shit moment for me. That's a bold opening. Bold for a metal band in the eighties. Before you press play, this is <laughs> this. This will be your introduction to this album. The first thing you'll hear is this shit. Yeah, I mean it's basically it's a minute long. Horns and kettle drums. Yeah. Dude, that is the ugliest fucking lip I can imagine. With an ugly, ugly horns. It all sounds like ass. I it speaks to a part of my soul. <laughs> oh, dude, you need to stop looking at Giger. The Edge Lord in me loves that. Um, what was I gonna say? Okay, so the thing I was gonna say earlier that I'm coming back to is like, I don't even know like what metal bands to compare this to. Because I think with time, bands like Cradle of Filth and Demu Berger have like taken the concept and like twisted it and turned it into this very more like thematic mm-hmm. uh, stage show thing. Um, arguably more cartoony, which isn't a bad thing. It's just more cartoony. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. It's so crazy. Like. Like to me, there's a level that's not genuine with those bands. Mm-hmm. And I say that as someone who listened to Cradle Filth yep, yeah, yeah. way longer than I should have. Yep. Um, like to me, this is always like Celtic Frost is always genuine. It's for sure genuine because you know they were broke doing this stuff. There wasn't like a, a, a scene behind it, really. Uh, there wasn't a. It's it, like I said, it's a, it, these are the, these songs are like <laughs> music alienators <laughs> like, dude if you like music i don't think you're gonna want to listen to this <laughs> and i like it but uh this album it's it's so tough because it's not like a it doesn't have enough punchiness and speed or heaviness to like really get you in that that kind of guttural uh um primal uh aspect that a lot of metal taps into mm-hmm. it's just dark and ugly and word it sounds like someone dying <laughs> like, i don't know how else to put it i feel like if i had found celtic frost before neurosis because uh, it took me a while to get into neurosis Same. i, I would have been more willing to accept neurosis had i listened to this band first and so like once you've gone neurosis this is a fucking cakewalk i like neurosis though and i i don't really like this band like I don't know, maybe because I do, I do feel like Neurosis does hit that primal part mm-hmm. where it's just so heavy and satisfying, and everything is so well produced and well performed. Here, it's like these guys are fine, but they're not like amazing. At oh, I any disagree. Of the- I disagree. Really? I think they're fucking at this stage in this album. I don't fucking think so. It- and man, and it's that's that opening. Intro isn't even the only time they use those ridiculous horns and kettle drums. No, uh, Dawn of Mache. Mijeo? How do you, let me see how do you spell that. Uh, Donna, oh, uh, I think it's Megiddo. I think you forgot Megi- the Megiddo. Megiddo is a, a thing in uh, the Bible. It's a thing. I don't know. It's thing about well, Satan. While we're on the Bible, the title to Megatheron Theron, yeah. is uh, Greek for the great beast, which uh, Alistair Crowley called himself. From the book of Revelation. What a fucking nerd. He He's the himself, biggest nerd. He called himself the I am the great beast. beast. You will call me nothing other than the great beast. Probably with, with no dumb pa- fucking hat. With no pants on. For sure. For and sure. then. Dude, to, exhausted wills. To make a Theron also adds up to 666 using uh, Greek Jamirta. Yeah. Basically, it's a sign. Gematria, gematria. Basically, know. it's assigning numerical value to words oh, and letters. Okay, ah, that's all fucking and very nerdy. It's, it's so nerdy. It's such a stretch. Like when you're playing that, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, that's not. Even I'm remotely. the great beast. <laughs> it's not even remotely scary. It's no, like, it's not. It's it's far more scary when you don't know what they're trying to do. When they're like hiding little Easter eggs of evil <laughs> behind is, every aspect. Is this the? Uh, Right here. I'm I'm gonna queue up some of the horns and uh go ahead because I wrote timestamps oh, for good, you very guys. Good. Uh so I do think this is all right, I got it oh, ready. Got it? Okay. Well. Here's here's some because before it was kind of isolated, but this is like with the band. Okay. It's 
so many wrong notes. <laughs> it works for, I don't know, it works for me. I'm, I'm never getting laid after this podcast. <laughs> Especially because you worship the devil. Uh, I was expecting to get a laugh from that. <laughs> no. Uh, Why well, don't? I know. You know, I, know. I, think I, he's, know. I think he's cool and all, but. <laughs> uh, shit, I thought I had. So this whole album, uh, it's as evil and ugly as the first album. Not first album, the first EP. But uh, I just, it's. I think it's a lot better. Just in terms of the production really helps. This is a more, lot. And this is like more unique. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really sound like generic thrash. I mean, the first one didn't sound like generic thrash, but it definitely sounded like it could be uh, lumped in with thrash. Mm-hmm. This one, not so much. This is a real. It, these are the most bitter riffs I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Salty. Yeah. Salty. Super riffs. salty. Uh, actually, I, I will know. Uh, I can fucking read. Um, Tears in a Pro- uh, Prophet's Dream. Mm-hmm. It is. It's one of. The, it's like the first official non-music. This is all evil, scary track. Mm-hmm. Uh, legitimately creepy. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good track, and yeah. it, it's not. It's m- more effective than the Daz. Uh, Daz Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not music, really. I mean, I guess that's a. a it's this atmosphere. It's not a song. White yeah. noise. It's like a white noise, but it, it it nails what it's trying to do, which is be evil and creepy. I dig it. Good album. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I I do. I still believe this is not going to convince casual metal fans, even a little bit. I'm. It's so hideous, dude. Casual metal fans, if you're not fucking around with celtic frost like what are you even doing with your life like, listening to better music my man <laughs> oh no no i this <laughs> man especially if you like doom especially if you like sludge like see man. i love sludge more than i love sludge more than doom but at this stage it's not very sludgy it's it's more of this weird non label specific ugly metal that they kind of pioneered it's like ugly symphonic metal because now symf- symphonic metal is there's nothing ugly about it. It's no, very, that's like very, very slick, very power metal, Sonata Arctica, it, fucking crap. Yeah, yeah, sorry if you like them, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move on. Good album. Is this like a classic? I'm sure, right? People, oh, yeah, people yeah, fucking yeah. love this yeah. one, man. I'm gonna get some hate. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you were that hard on it. Really? Like I. Th- I thought you were, as someone who this said they loved that album, I thought you were fairly okay. reasonable. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I try. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to the next. Uh, 1987, Into the Pandemonium. What a fucking weird cover song. As your opening track. Hey. <laughs> hey. 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 Hey, you there! Hey! <laughs> he just turned into Matt Berlinski. <laughs> hey! We keep mentioning our friend Matt. Uh, if you guys met him, Matt, you'd love him. I had to, when I first heard this, I I had to look up that it was a cover because I thought, I was like, are they doing fucking hair metal now? What, what's happening? What the fuck? Listen to this. Yeah. This is the most That is the most generic four chords In all of rock music Yeah, this is a weird song to have on this album As the opening track And here it is Oh no I'm so fucking bad I want, okay, I want you to do me a favor Before we talk about it I want for because it's, it's on that track. Yeah, I want you to put on two minutes eleven seconds and listen to these backup vocals because I, when I heard this, I had to rewind it and then listen to it again, and I did that like six times in a row because I was dying laughing. I was oh, bent yeah. over laughing. Also, before I play it, it's real uncomfortable on the main course how like the backing vocals sings it normally, and then Tom's kind of like off. Radio, yeah. Mexican radio. Yeah, it's like he's <laughs> it's like a fucking troll. He is a troll, <laughs> not like in a like troll. Uh, like this troll. Physically, no, he's a he's a bridge troll. Physically, for he's sure, a bridge, bridge troll. troll. Yeah. Okay, All right. here we go. Eating 
barbecue. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Put it, put it, put it on again. Take you one out. Eating barbecue. <laughs> So despite that, despite that, best, what? best no. album, personal no. favorite. No but, fucking yeah, way. I love this album so much. <laughs> it's so, that song excluded. <laughs> this is probably the most. Oh my God. Oh shit, I'm, I'm fucking crying. <laughs> this is probably the most we've, we've laughed. Oh my how is this your best album i fucking love it so much like the next track mesmerize is so weird it's so moody like man the orchestral shit really comes through on this album like um i bought up mesmerize yeah it's yeah. kind of like robert smith stumbled into the studio he's like singing now but i i his singing it, it reminds me like a like a like a weirder, weaker Roz Williams from Christian Death, mm -hmm. where he's kind of mumbling. It it sounds like he it doesn't even sound like he's singing. It sounds like he has like a stomach ache. It, he's yeah, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good way to describe it. It's it's fu and the thing is, I like it better than his his growls from the first two releases. Mm -hmm. uh, oddly enough, I don't even know why. And then, uh, I'm not gonna the Daloon Daloon track is oh this. um, it's uh I'm gonna try to say it with with the accent. I'm not. I'm gonna fuck it up. It says "Tris." Ah, it's a "Tristes de la Lune." Like, is this lady vocals? That's like a full-on French film track. Yeah, it's and it's my favorite track in the album. Really, I love it. I fucking love it. Um, caress into oblivion. You bring in like the wacky, like sepultura percussion on the drums. That's that that one felt more like the the Celtic Frost that I enjoy quite a bit. I did, let me, did dig that. Let me pull those drums up so y'all know what I'm what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fucking Mexican radio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Compose yourself. Okay. All right. I think that's really fucking cool. It's interesting. Uh, and and kind of like the album before this, they're not like those outside elements are not mixed well, mm -hmm. uh, which is not, it's not a fault to their implementation, but it is, it does sound odd. It sounds like they were recorded in uh, a separate echoey room and then thrown on top of it. Yeah. Or like they were too scared to have it. So it's just kind of low. In yeah. The mix. Yeah. And then you got one in their pride. That's a straight industrial metal. It sounds like a fucking ministry song. Yeah. And it, all this shit is on one album. It's it, it's this album confused the fuck out of me. It, I was so lost by the end of it. It is the most uh, like like a manic depressant recorded this fucking album. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty, <laughs> pretty apt. Also on my notes, I wrote this is this is the real S&M right here. Like this is arguably more cool and like translates better as like a metal orchestral thing than anything. Oh, you mean SNF from Metallica? They're talking yeah, about yeah. fucking sex right now. The oh, whole no, time. No, 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 Sorry, Metallica's SNF. Okay, okay. So the far like, less sexy with uh, Michael Kanan. <laughs> I, I fucking think that's his name. I don't know who that composer Kamen. is. Kanan, I think that's his name. And then he, like, did, he did, actually did, sorry, he did the score or the soundtrack for Die Hard. Oh. That's why I know him. Nice. Yeah, anyway. I didn't know that. Uh, and then to me, like Celtic Frost, like Magnum Opus. Am I using that correctly? I believe so. Rex Irear, Requiem. Oh, God. Oh, no. I oh, my love God. that song. I fucking. Really? I think it's one of the greatest metal songs ever. What? Ever. Ever? Ever. Ever? Forever, ever. <laughs> Forever, ever. It, I. It's impossible for me to take that song seriously. I, so, everything that it tries, it is just so to the extreme. It, it is the most cartoony. It is the most cartoony. There are cartoony elements. I'm not going to lie. The operatic vocals, the female. It fucking operatic, works for me. There's so many instances that this band uses female vocals. And m 
man, the vast majority, I thought, I think they sound strange and weirdly placed. I just did, didn't gel mm. with me. <clears throat> and I mean, the, it's not like a, like a, like a, out of left field. It, it's more of the kettle drums and the horns that we've been introduced to already. Mm-hmm. Put on a little bit of that song. Cause I, 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 I'm shitting on it because I remember it very poorly, not poorly. I remember it negatively. I remember it very negatively. You mean the greatest. You s- so, so you say Alex, ever recorded. But we all know you're a liar and you're a known liar. Known liar. Six minutes of awesomeness. That production really does hurt it. They're, they're not mixed well at all. Because it's a cool violin line. Yeah, it could be, be a Mahavishnu song right now. Yeah. Is that King Diamond? Oh, that's a lady, Alex. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, man, it, you know what? The weirdness is actually very fascinating to me. I I think it might just be the song itself that I really don't like, because those chord changes really don't do it for me. Maybe. maybe yeah. I, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think we brushed over the ministry song too much because... Oh, should I give them a sample? Full on drum machine, which is hilarious when you're listening to what is essentially an extreme metal album. It Like, we're talking about it and it all sounds so random, but I think it's like, for me, like it all works for some reason. Like, like pineapple on pizza is disgusting but i'm gonna use it's like why would you why would you do that what's that doing on my pizza right, right. but here it all fucking works for me for whatever reason this like, album is your pineapple yeah this is my pineapple pizza album and uh one in the pride here we go <laughs> what the fuck I don't know how I forgot how jarring this is, especially in the context of this album. See, like, I disagree. Like, you I, don't think that's jarring to hear a full on D- Run DMC drum machine at the beginning <laughs> of the fucking extreme metal album? I don't know. It fucking works for me, man. <laughs> like, this is, <sighs> or maybe more, this is like, uh, some people think like Guy Ferrari creates like abominations of food. It's, Wait, what? Like, they just think, like, he makes, like, abomination. Like, why would you put a fucking uh, turducken with a pig and, oh, and cheeseburgers? Because he's a fucking genius. You you trust a man that big who, oh, who loves food that much. Dude, you trust that man. Dude, I was watching the stupid Sammy Hagar show, and it was him and Guy Ferrari going to Maynard from Tool, his uh-huh. vineyard, and they took a private jet there. And uh, Sammy's like, hey, man, uh, got a got a chef on here. You want something to eat? And I'm sure it was staged, but it's so fucking funny. And Ferrari's like, oh, no, I got us, man. And he pulls out fucking hoagies. I'm like, that's why people hate you, because like that's the most guy Ferrari thing ever. Also, they're jealous. They don't have that hoagie. Absolutely. Uh, I went on a I weird, would, wild detour dude, right now. All that made me want is to hang out with Sammy Hagar and Guy Ferrari. Uh, if not only just to hear Sammy Hagar uh, howl every now and then. It, <laughs> those also, those two meeting Maynard is one of the most awkward things. Is it because Maynard's awkward? <laughs> well, he is awkward. And yeah, it's like these two guys who like bleach their fucking hair and wear flames. <laughs> Dude, they wear the same kind of stupid red rim sunglasses that I, I've been <laughs> ranting about since the. Cabo Wabo, baby. <laughs> Hello, baby. Hello, so, Maynard. Now we're just talking about Van Halen. Episode 18. Check that one. <laughs> we we tear into Sammy Hagar pretty viciously. Or I do, at least. No. I liked one song. You can't say I liked him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah damn yeah. right. Uh, but this album, uh, by the end of it, I usually have like a, like, oh, I enjoyed that or I didn't enjoy that. This, at the end of it, all I could think was that was just fucking weird. That was so weird. I don't even really know. I think it's worth checking out for the sake of how insane it is. It's not something you put on in social gatherings. Don't ever, ever put it on in front of your friends. It's ever. 
It's not something you put on when you got a lady over. Don't ever put any metal on if you have a lady over, <laughs> to be fair. Unless they... Unless I think I could squeak in some metal. Very specific metal songs. Very specific digestible metal. In it. Yeah. But... Uh, it's, a, it's a male genre. Like... Oh, yeah. I don't even know why. It's a cock fest. I don't even know why. Like... It's, that's odd it's to me. Very aggro. It's very yeah. Because I knew a lot of girls who did who were in the metal, but the, the the ratio was just ridiculous. It was no, not even close. It is. I think that's why a or in my day, um, girls were more likely to be into like screamo and emo, and even though they used heavy elements, yeah. I think because those dudes were wieners, <laughs> it was more like. It was they. They felt like it was less threatening because they're like, he's got a little wiener voice. Well, I can I can listen to double a, bass. A lot of lot of wiener voices, but also, uh, objectively, males that were more attractive. Yes, yes. <laughs> Male, I will metal, give them that. Metalheads are not good looking. As a guy who was a metalhead in my teens, not good looking. <laughs> Man, yeah, our choice in wardrobe is not always it is just, to this day not the best dude if it's one or the other it's either full-on spikes fucking studs everywhere or black t-shirt black pants <laughs> it's like it's too far and then not far enough in, mm -hmm. in both extremes uh and that's our thought on fashion so those are fun little detours about guy ferrari why girls think emo <laughs> is okay and yeah. metal isn't not all girls. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, in the very, I've met some pretty rad ladies who would dig some good music. But uh, we are on to the next album, the hardest album to find of this band because it's not streaming. This album came out in 1988. This is Cold Lake. Should I play the intro or? You, you need to. Okay. And I swear this is the same. Band. This is real. We're not kidding. They're like, okay, okay. Well, We're fucking hip hop now. Well, not yet. But you're kind of like, okay, because you got one in their pride. So, okay, maybe. There is no more human and then you're just like, did I throw on the right band? No. This is so confusing. What the fuck? Dude. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, okay, next song. The, the uh, actual first track. I mean, we only got Jeez. eight seconds. Left. Yeah. You're listening to the full intro. What the fuck is happening? And now we're there. And then you're like, well, maybe that was just a mistake. This isn't bad right now. This is okay. Even his booms. Yeah. They're not as. His vocals on here have taken a change. Taken quite the change. Check this out. It is out. You kill me again. Yeah. Just yeah. Me. What are you guys? All right. Oh. Fucking enough of that. Fucking worst. Yep. Worst album. Worst by not even. No, there's no. No, matter there's how no much competition. I, no matter how much I don't care for this band. There is no fucking question. This is horrendous. I, so I think this is their worst album, but I don't think it's all that painful to listen to. Right. Um, it's not full blown glam metal. There are no. It's the, more thrash and he heavy metal than than glam. Yeah, but there's elements for sure. So Warrior, not only does he consider this like the worst. Uh, Celtic Frost album ever. He considers it the worst heavy metal album ever. Uh, Which to you, sir, I say you should listen to Glam Era Pantera. Because Yeah, there's some this, rough shit there. It's a low bar, and I'm not saying this is a good album, but this is vastly easier to listen to than any of that glam I, metal Pantera. Right. I found this more unapologetically boring than infuriating. I like, would uh, that, that those Pantera albums are pretty fucking Rage inducing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so weird. So like they broke up after touring for into the pandemonium and then got back together six months later. Um, Warrior said he had like very little interest in it. 
and lit this guy named Michael Amberg to compose most of the album. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also says he was too eager to just have a good time. He just wanted to have a good time. He said he was kind of like drained from composing all the music. And now he's with musicians who also want to compose music. Okay. And he's like, it's exciting. We're this we're this going to have fun. But he said that was a mistake. <laughs> um, this was intended to be more like a, a melodic album. Uh huh. And it just it didn't turn out that way. I think this was like intended to be more like Sisters of Mercy. Mm -hmm. um, for those who are interested, there are three songs on streaming on the Parched with Thirst Am I and Dying compilation. What's it? Which, which, uh, which uh, Juices Like Wine, Cherry Orchards, and Downtown uh, Hedo. Uh, downtown. Oh, that's Downtown Hanoi. Hanoi. Like in the, 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 the Vietnam. Uh, and those are um, mixed a little heavier, a little dirtier. They're they're Tom Warrior approved mixes. Uh huh. I would, but not Tom Warrior approved songs. No. Nor Alex and Mike approved songs because I mean I don't know how you feel about those songs, but I think they fucking blow. Yeah, uh, there's nothing real like memorable at all. Like, I I would disagree. Very slight, lightly, slightly. Like here and there, I it's still the chorus to uh, Petty. Petty Obsession. Mm -hmm. Fucking awesome. Okay. And then that that's the only thing in the whole album is that one chorus. Um, like like juices like wine, I could kind of see why that's included, but then the vocals are comical to me on the that vo song. Vocals on this entire album are man. It's it's like uh an impression of the worst thrash metal vocalist. Mm. I, I can't even wrap my head around why someone would try that yeah it's it okay a real lackadaisical um although i could see when you're doing uh in my opinion very challenging music on the last two albums and how challenging to listen to am i right <laughs> yuck, 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 sorry yuck. go on um I can see why you're doing that and if you are the main contributor to that the and this financially being fucking in the dumps, I could see how this album could happen. Like I, I get it. I totally understand why it went there. There's a, yeah, a lot of shitty albums happen for a litany of reasons. This is just another one, but I do think it is truly awful. It's, it was, it's so like, man, I wasn't tired listening to this album, but I became tired. Uh, yeah, and, and it's and it, it it's double worse because this band went from being the most unpredictable, weirdest, completely bonkers metal band to being the most generic, predictable, boring, forgettable one. Like with over the course of one album. Like I give Metallica so much credit for being able to go from Injust or Injustice to the Black Album yeah. because. It's fucking crazy. Like, I don't care what anyone says. Like, the Black Album is fucking amazing. It's a fantastic album. I do. I think I probably like Justice a lot more, but I still think Black Album is fantastic. Yeah. And just to like do, I'm using this term lightly, simpler music and still maintain that integrity. Yeah. Is like that fucking the way they pulled that off bravo for sure, and for obviously sure. you can see with other bands that very few bands can pull that off it's it's very difficult because especially when you uh for for there's a, a whole large camp of people that think that simple means less interesting simple means more boring simple means less good and it's, mm -hmm. it's that is not the case like you can it, it's just you're probably maybe less talented if you can't pull it off because there's lots of good interesting complex simple things mm -hmm. uh, it's agree. a very very gray world of music there and again it goes into the uh the tom warrior mentality of uh you know being heavy is more important than anything technical so mm -hmm. i can see why this album happened mm. you know in, in, a, in a sort of a uh, uh wider scope uh this album only attributes to how weird the band is it really does because and this band where we have a few more albums to go they keep changing they keep getting weirder they keep it's man unpredictable fucking band and this is just another instance of their unpredictability it just happens to be whack in our opinion 
Yeah, and in most people's yeah. opinion. Like, uh, yeah, it's out of print. It's not on streaming. You can find it on YouTube or what, however you find music. Yeah. It's it's available. It's not for purchase. Yeah. Um, and like I said, obviously, he has some attachment to those, those three songs. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I don't think they'd be on the compilation album. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not like people were fucking, you know, but yeah, petitioning for them. I don't know. I think if a band is ashamed of music, though, just, I don't know, put it out there, like, because people are going to want to listen to it. Nerds. And, yeah. 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 Like, like us. I mean, we literally had to seek them out. <laughs> yeah. Or seek this one out. And yeah, it's just like, yeah, you may not be proud of it, but I don't know. It's part, it's part of who you, who you are and your, your DNA of the band. Yeah. And as a, as a quick selfish side note man i there's so much music that i've written over my life time that is completely gone and and not written down and it's forgotten that my god would i be humiliated if i heard it now but <laughs> in a way like, i do miss it like i do wish I, I could reflect on it a little bit uh so record your shit people record your shit keep it around it's a uh, it's a diary it is it is <clears throat> so let's move on to what's next so we Fast forward to 1989. This is... Is that 1990? Or 1990. I don't... Sorry. It is 1990. I don't know why on the album. 1990. Vanity Nemesis. The heart. Please. I always forget that's there. to whisper. Well... I think we're back. It sounds like we're back a little bit. This is kind of a course. <laughs> it's kind of a, a course correcting album. Yeah. A lot of intro. Standard metal fare, pretty much. Yep. Uh, man, I, the second I hit play, there's like a lot of relief. And then you start singing. The voice still sounds pretty fucking dumb. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's talk. This is like a return to thrash. Um, Very thrashy. Again. I give it, I still give it a miss. It's not, it's not bad. But like you've taken me to the mountains of madness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I liked it up there. Yeah, and yeah, I just view this as like a course correct album. Like nothing really stuck with me. To me, this is like what Cold Lake should have been. Yeah. Uh, there's not as much cheese, but then it's not as adventurous. Nope. And it, this, it kind of feels long. Uh, yeah, it's long, and I don't like this album at all. I mean, shocker, right? Uh, fuck, man. I, I was so pleased with that opening track. Like, oh, fuck, they're heavy again. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, and then it kept going on and on, and his vocals are still bad. They're like almost as, they're not quite as bad as the last album, but they're still pretty bad. Like, based on the cover, I thought they were going to do like a more like goth rock industrial thing, because that's kind of what the... Look at these fucking nerds. Yeah, dude, one of them has glasses. Come on, dude. You're yeah. taking a photo. Oh, man. Although I will say I'm sure this like helped some nerds get into metal because they're like, hey, look yeah. at that. Look at that wimpy dude. Yeah. Right? yeah. And then uh, you get like your deaf heavens. And, For uh, sure. Yeah. There was a another, another sidetrack. There was a I don't know if they're still together or not. Probably not. There's this uh, like retro thrash band called. They used to be called Meltdown. Then they changed it into Mantic Ritual for legal reasons, I guess. And the singer was a total fucking nerd who had glasses. Uh, and I remember uh, I saw them once uh, and they were opening up for Destruction, the German thrash band, and made Destruction look like bitches. Like, oh, wow. They were real good. Real good. Uh, and then uh, that is my only instance with a metalhead with glasses. So anyway. <clears throat> There's also, damn, am I thinking? Who am I thinking of? What's got there? What's going on? Damn, there was some dude, I can't think of his fucking name. I think he might be in Wolves in the Throne Room. What, no. more, more eyeglasses? Yeah, yeah. This, like, does not dress the part. 
this a nerd and plays like heavy and, mm-hmm. and it's fucking great. I can't think of the guy. I might even have the wrong band. I might even have the wrong band. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Anyways, it's, lots it's, of those guys. Now. Yeah, it, 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 it's a it's a new world. We can do what we want. You can look how you want. Yeah. <laughs> but the album. Ah, uh, fucking a man, dude. Uh, I think it's a, this is a weird specific poll, but the intro and it's like a recurring riff in the song of uh, a kiss, of, a kiss or a whisper. It's like a really, really bad knockoff of the intro to Darkness Descends from Dark Angel, which is Gene Hoagland's. If, Famous metal drummer Gene Hoagland, his main band. Uh, Darkness Ascends by Dark Angel is a fucking incredible album. Mm-hmm. It's the opening track. It has this fucking amazing build up intro. That song is that exact riff, just with shittier notes, just shittier progressions, same exact <laughs> rhythm, same build up, just worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, all I could think about the whole time was how there's a better version of this riff out there. Uh, sure. The, the vocals I already mentioned that I don't care for on this album at all, but on uh where did i can't this island earth that that's one oh of my the god. worst songs oh my one god. of the worst songs god they're so horrid they're horrid on that song yeah i'm glad you wrote that down because <laughs> i had i was like this is one of the worst it's songs so ever bad. it's so bad throw oh. this throw this on the cold lake album and let's forget about yes, it yes please what else did I fucking like? I don't know. I, I did really, uh, really like the acoustic sections of uh, Wings of Solitude, but I do dislike the rest of the song, especially mm. the the female uh, backup vocals in the chorus sections. They're just so predictable. They're really, really cheesy. Uh, I I so so badly wanted this to be like uh, something different yeah. or like just part of the like evolution and it's this kind of like i said it's a course correcting thing more than anything else it's one not- yeah for sure uh i don't i didn't pay attention to it much on the last album because i was fucking trying to get through <laughs> it but this one they are really showing off that new guitarist the solos are just overboard there's so many like they're pretty cool a lot of them are really good yeah. really, really good and he's clearly a really good guitar player but <laughs> all over the, they just use any excuse to throw in a fucking Minute and a half solo. I should have looked up that dude's the second guitar player's name on this album, and that would be who is it? Who is? Oh no, name? is that all? Which the same dude? I think that's all Tom Warrior. Really? Because before they were more, uh, like especially in the earlier stuff, it was way more dive bomby, mm-hmm. uh, a lot more um, not like uh, nonsense. Right, I nonsense. guess I guess it's a guy named Marn or Ron Marks. Ryan Ex- Marks. Except on tracks two and seven. Okay. Uh, yeah, before they were they were very uh, Jeff Hanneman-y where it's like ding, 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 but, like, but nonsense notes, not exactly constructed kind of thing. Not mm-hmm. exactly constructed solo. Uh, here, these are these are full-on solos with, you could tell he thought about them and wrote them out kind of. Also, yeah, there's a million guitar players on this album because their bass player also played rhythm guitar on some tracks. Uh-huh. But there's a very specific solo. Whoever's soloing, uh, you, on, it's the on same. On what track? Uh, all of them, all, like oh, um, most of them. There's a there. Whenever there's a guitar solo, it is clearly this dude. Well, Mr. It. Warrior is credited as. Ooh. Well, then it was probably him yeah. because uh, solos were never that prominent in this band. Mm-hmm. And here, they're uh, they're pretty prominent. I feel like I don't. I, I ah, yeah. There's a lot going on here. There's it's and it's so long. It is. It's this one. The fatigue hit in. Yeah. Or, yeah. I was. Uh. Yeah. Hoping it would it would turn things around for me. And it did not, boy. But I'm sure there's something someone can like. It, Maybe I, mean, I don't yeah, know. I how, mean, how do the, fans feel about this? Album? Yeah, they're not like ashamed of it the way they are with Cold Lake. Yeah. Like they'll reissue this album, and I'm sure this has its fans. But like I said, I've been I've been to the peak. Yeah. You see, and, you've seen Zeus himself. Yes, yeah. and this may not be the bottom of the lake. No, oh, uh, this may be like the shores of the cold lake. Yeah, it's like a fucking, it's a lukewarm lake. Yeah, something like that, tepid lake. Uh, so, anyways, let's move on. Break up, break up in yeah. 1993. Okay, uh, were there reasons? Was uh, he poor and he this, could not afford to do this? This what? personality clashes. I'm sure there was fatigue. And then in 2002, uh, Michael Ayer and uh, Tom Gabriel start jamming, start working on some songs. Yeah. 
Uh, this was this next album was our so it leads to 2006 monotheist monotheist sorry <laughs> yeah I should have let you say <laughs> that is real low I, I love this album <laughs> See, he still does the ooh, but now there's some fucking guttural shit. Oh, I think being, like, in his 50s helps his vocals. Fuck yeah! Turn this up a little bit. Still born into the stage of being so you still know it's him. It yes. is still Tom Warrior, but there is some act... It, it's more authentic. It feels more real to me. This... This is like classic right up there with the rest of their classic albums. All right, let's, let's talk. So obviously, because obviously. I've been talking shit this entire episode, best album, personal favorite by no dude, dude, this is no brainer. No I, fucking brainer, dude. I love this album. I almost gave this one one of those. Yeah. It was between the two for me. This is a fucking man. It's so always good when someone can come back real strong mm-hmm. this is arguably like one of the best like older dudes recording metal albums ever mm-hmm. um like it's fucking comes back with a vengeance it is the heaviest they've ever been by a mile it is even, so heavy even when they like slow things down for they do do it a lot there's a lot of sludges so it's on here. so heavy so good so fucking heavy um but yeah this was supposed to come out around 2002 2003 but i would think at this point like celtic frost would have been legendary yeah but i guess they still weren't mm-hmm. so they had like issues getting the album financed mm-hmm. uh they this eventually decided to do it themselves um after doing that though sanctuary media Mm -hmm. uh came on board and was like we'll help you uh distribute the album so um and then i think i think this album probably like helped cement them at least in america yeah as like real fucking heavy hitters they finally like got their due yeah, I'm. Gl- that's fucking very heartwarming to hear. Even though I didn't care for any of the albums, I think those fucking to mega mega theron mega theron and like pandemonium are fucking yeah classic. Dude, this fucking album, man. and yeah, this album right up there with those other two. It's like, so different too. Yeah. It's like I kept. I, I was kind of hinting that they they're always unexpected and you never fucking know what they're going to do. Even if it's bad, there's still some, something unexpected. This is yet another left turn. Like I wasn't expecting, th- expecting them to lean so heavily into sludge. So, so down to so low. So, so good. Production is the best it's ever been. Uh, all the things I was complaining that you enjoyed, but I was complaining about the, like the disconnect with uh, the, the female vocals where it just kind of didn't, it just didn't feel like it fit for me. And then a lot of the orchestral elements, uh, they, they were mixed poorly here it it's fucking beautifully done. Yep. The every time there's a the female vocal on here, it's fucking gorgeous. Every time there's a, a, an odd element thrown in there, works perfectly. Uh, what's the name of the song? Down down in ash. Uh, where is it? Fuck man, I need to change the font. Down in ashes, drown in ashes because I can't read. Is full on synthy shit. Mm-hmm. Full on synthy shit. It's fucking awesome. Uh, great female vocals in that song. Uh, the the clean intro to uh, a dying god coming into human Love flesh. That song. It's beautiful and i've never heard him sing sing before yeah sounds awesome i don't know why he didn't do that more dude y- yeah you need to check out his other bad uh trip trip to con uh that is tr- yeah trip to con trip spelled, to con. spelled probably incorrectly <laughs> dude you need to check that out because that is more of this really oh i mean i mean i mean and that's I mean, yeah like i said i started with that band for some reason mm. and worked my way backwards so like I think you'd really like his other band. All right, all right, all right. Um, yeah, obs- obscured is another great. Oh, fucking awesome! Love it. So good, so good. Like, this is probably, like I said, I worked backwards. I guess other people should. This is probably like, if you appreciate heavy 
heavy music, extreme metal to the, the most literal sense of that. Not literal, but the most uh, truest, the truest sense of extreme metal. This is this is a yeah. great entry point yeah. and perhaps even more like if you're not on board with full weirdness, like I think this is a, a good, a great album to start with, ironically. Oddly enough, yeah, I, I because extreme metal is one of those things where, man, if you don't personally re- resonate with it or you don't kind of get it uh conceptually it is the most abrasive nonsensical thing in the world it is all <laughs> i mean it is all of the most ugly parts of sound like like i need i need highs and lows even in extreme music like yeah we just saw cattle decap and they're excellent musicians but, for sure but it's too much for me yeah it, it was uh it was a an onslaught. It was, it was, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's people who dig it. If you dig it, good for you. For sure. Uh, I'm just saying like, I can't like, so when I think of like unrelenting metal, I don't think of this. Yeah. Although I understand how yeah, it's a long album. It's, it's yeah. real long. Yeah. And even the songs are real. There's a tw- th- yeah, fucking the- 12 minute banger called, uh, uh, it's in. This is it's an evil fucking word. It's uh synagogue satanic. Sa- you know what? Satani, satani, satani. You know why? I, <laughs> I can't even fucking say it. It's what is it like? Some evil Latin. You know why it's evil? Why? Because they went back for some more Crowley for. There's more and more Crowley stuff. Inspiration stuff on this. Yeah. It's 12 minutes and it's fucking awesome. It's man. It is. It goes through a lot of places. Very sludgy, as you would expect from a song that's twelve minutes. Yep. Uh, but it, it's like it feels more like two different songs kind of smashed together because yeah. the, the second half is completely different. It's got really, really cool, simple but cool um, harmonies going on. Not like traditional harmonies where you know I, I'm singing one third below you, and we're doing. It's like the guitar is hitting this one note while the bass is doing this other fucking sludgy thing, and it it, it just it blends very nicely. Um, like I said, it's produced fucking gorgeously. Uh, man, it's still very ugly. The riffs are still super duper ugly, like we know from Celtic Frost, <laughs> but they're just better. I don't know. That's like a really mm-hmm. lazy way to say that, but they feel better. They're because the production is so strong. They're way more punchy. They're more neurosis y, where it's just yep. every time you they hit it, you fucking feel it. Ah, it's good. Album. I was. Dude, I was so worried. <laughs> I was so worried. Because not just because I wasn't. No, I, I've i listened to this album uh, before, before. So you knew it was, yeah. was going to be okay. Uh, I wasn't worried. Like, I assumed it was going to be bad. I wasn't worried that it was going to be bad. I automatically went in. Oh, like, this is going to be bad. I was worried that it was going to be bad. And I couldn't decide on which one was the best for me. It's. I, and then when I heard it, I'm like, oh, thank Christ. It's yeah. This, uh, yeah, this is it's, this one. It's so hard for bands who have been around, especially if they've made some stinkers to, yeah. to do this. And it's always like heartwarming and it's always a feel good story, even if they're making uh, abrasive music yeah. that's not yeah. for the masses. Um, yeah, this fucking album, I wasn't like following the band in real time. I like got into them later, but. God damn, yeah. If you were lucky enough to catch these dudes yeah. after like while they were supporting this album, fucking good on you. I can only imagine that that being a, an exhausting show. I would fucking cool, but dude, dude, I uh, we uh, you took me to see sleep some some time ago. I forgot I took you. Yeah. Man, I like sleep a lot, but fuck, man, toward the end, I'm like I'm getting sleepy. They might as well play Sleep might as well just play Dope Smoker every time because that's what yeah. this turns into. Because there's no real breaks between the songs and there's no like dun, the, dun, 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 dun. I think yeah, I think I dragon out. Dragon out's pretty pretty like it'll it'll perk you up a little yeah. bit. But for the most part in boom Yeah Boom Dude boom. Yeah. I made the mistake of going to watch Sun without knowing anything Ooh, about sun really and i was like this is this is it uh give me 20 more minutes then i'll leave let me see where this is going yeah and for some reason i kept telling myself 20 more 20 minutes. more minutes and i was like what the fuck <laughs> did you ask for your money back no 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 i, I never listen to some but I, I i don't dismiss them 
<sighs> That's a whole nother podcast. Oh boy. Okay. Right. Um, but yeah, the band broke up again in okay. 2008. Um, bass player in, I don't know how to say that. Uh, yeah. A- what, how do you spell it? A I N. Ah, Ian. I would Ian. say Ian. Martin Ian. He died of a heart attack in Ooh. 2017. So not that long ago. Jeez. How old was he? Uh, he was probably like late 50s. That's not that old. No, it's he not that been, old. Yeah, not taking care of Uh, Tom Warrior still doing his thing still with, kicking? with Trip, 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 Tripticon? Tripticon. 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 Still, That's a Y in it. So. That dude's like 60, still doing it. And like I said, I feel like age just helps his gnarly voice. He's kind of like Lemmy in that sense. Or like, dude, you you got like the perfect voice to be an old man. And I still don't care for his voice, even to the very end. But compared to earlier, to age is, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot better now. I like it a lot more. Uh, Man, I really thought I would like this band more, but I'm glad I at least like something. I got something from it. Man, the f- yeah, the the heaviness of how weird they are just fucking hit me while doing this this podcast. Because yeah. yeah, I've like dabbled or I'm like that's weird, but yeah, when you when uh, I'm doing the podcast and thinking about in the time frame and relation of other music coming out mm-hmm. and listening to like a whole discography. It's just fucking insane. Yeah, the man, like I, I for uh, a lot of these, <clears throat> I listen to one album, then I have to pal- cleanse my palate with something mm. w- way, way nicer, way less metal. <laughs> because uh, at that, because at a certain point, if you listen too much of this extreme shit in a row, it's gonna blend together. It's yeah. so, it's so intense. And like, like I was saying earlier, it is. Extreme metal is really like metal is not for everyone, but extreme mm-hmm. metal is insanely not for everyone. It's uh, uh, in my experience with the the music that I am knowledgeable about, it is the hardest one for me to pitch someone. Yes, because at least with like artsy experimental stuff, you can you can pitch it as oh it would be good for like a movie or it'd be good as like a, a you know ambient type of thing. For this. This is not, this is impossible to convince someone who's not already into this kind of thing. Yeah, there's not really, I'm trying, like maybe a horror movie, but. And then it would come across like Rob Zombie-esque and yeah. like cheesy because it's so like loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, they just bless their hearts. <laughs> Don't you ever say that to them. They'll curse no. you for that. No, yeah. But. Mr. Tom Warrior. That was our episode on Celtic Frost. Exciting. I'm glad we tackled them. Man, that was a... Never thought I'd get around to them in my entire life. I thought we were going to fight more. You... I'm trying to be respectful here. I fucking didn't like a lot of it, but it's it's so weird that I can't shit on something that's that interesting. I just yeah. can't. I, I really... Man, it excites me when I hear something I haven't heard, something mm-hmm. different, something unusual. I get... I'm a nerd. I fucking love that shit. Yeah. Even if I hate listening to it. Like this band. So recap, Alex. Best personal favorite into the pandemonium. Worst cold lake. I think we can agree there. Worst cold lake for damn sure. Best. Uh, that is. Wait, when did the cold lake come out? 88, I believe. 88, yeah. And then, of course, the best one is a monotheist. The last album that we just gushed about. Uh, yeah, I don't even. We just, we, we, I think we've capped it pretty nicely. Uh, I think I need a break from uh, extreme metal. After uh, you're not, spoiler alert, you're not getting it. I'm not. All right, I, maybe you'll get like a week off, right? No, next next episode will be more mellow. I already know what it is, unless you changed it. <sighs> no, I didn't change it. Hold on, let me let me take a gander. No, no, our next one is super good. Look yeah, at that. No, but then after that, oh oh, okay, then you're back. All right, all right. So maybe I don't get that much of a power concert. See. For people listening and watching, uh, we are being very, very vague and cool. Yeah. Next week is going to be cool and mellow. Week it's after that, not mellow. It's not I, mellow, but compared to this, and then the week we'll after that, t- we'll, you'll see what we're talking about next week. We're going to get fucking back to metal very soon. Man, we like talking up, th- dude. I was I was told recently that uh, we've been doing a lot of punk and metal, but I promise uh, after. 
Yeah. After that, stick with us for two more episodes. We will get some more variety. For sure. But I was also told that like it's really fun to listen to us talk about metal because these are like our most, especially like punk and metal. I know the most about punk uh, and metal, more punk than metal. And then you clearly know a lot more about metal uh, than I it, do. It's our at our heart of hearts. Yeah. And even though we both listen to a lot of different things at our heart of hearts. Yeah. It, those are those are our things. Yeah. And I don't even play metal or punk. I play things that are completely not, I have maybe metal elements, but uh, it's not even the music I want to I want to make. But it is something that is it is stuck with me my entire life. Uh, and we're good at talking about it. So I think we're going to keep throing them in there every now and then. We're going to keep tossing a little bit of like every now and then. All right. Also, also it was uh, Mr. Mr. Daniel Noriega's yeah. birthday party. And uh, that is this a, past, one of my best friends and a friend of Alex as well. This past weekend. And it's just so, so flattering and nice when uh, your friends are. Like that's all anyone wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, that was very sweet. Like the what, whole time, it was uh, that's all they were. It was talking. so sweet yeah. meeting. And even though I had met uh, Josh, yeah, yeah, once before, but it's still real sweet yeah. and nice when yeah. people. Yeah, are I had no idea people. <laughs> my friends listen to this. I I naturally assume most people don't. Uh, so thank you, and we love you to everyone who's listening. It's fucking. It's fun. It fucking it's fun. Yeah, I'm I'm also even if it's just our friends, much like Hellhammer and Tom Warrior's yeah. mentality, I'm glad our our friends at the end of the day this can be a, a haven for us to Fuck yeah. At least turn our buddies onto some shit. Yeah. Actually, no, if our friends didn't even enjoy listening to this, that'd be fucking hilarious. Like that would mean we are doing something very, very wrong. <laughs> oh man. But uh thank you so much, so much for listening and watching. If you would like to suggest an artist that maybe isn't so extreme, or maybe is, huh? Uh, send all that to every album ever at gmail.com. <clears throat> of course, like, subscribe, you know, on the YouTubes and the Apples, you leave reviews and all the things, uh, or if you tell a friend. Anyone who's listening on, on Spotify. Yeah. yeah. Which are very low, right? Uh, it's actually not that low. It's, okay. Yeah, Spotify is not too bad. All right. Uh, mo- majority of humans use Apple, but there is a very, you know, Spotify, they care. They care. Uh, well, I, shit, I forgot what to plug. What is it? Are they, you going to plug your music? Yeah, play, yeah. Oh, playlist. playlist. Playlist of Celtic Frost should be in the description of wherever you're watching or listening, and as well as everyomever.com. Playlist for every episode. We pick a lot of music. We've been procrastinating lately, mostly me. I keep forgetting to pick songs, but they will be up. I swear to God. I get all my pot. I get my picks in. I get mine. You get you get yours. I bring the ruckus. I bring the ruckus. God damn. I wish I could do a better JB Smooth impression. JB Smooth, <laughs> you are a just- I bring the ruckus to late. JB Smooth has <laughs> brought so much joy it's and laughter into my life. If I ever got to meet JB Smooth, oh, I would choke. I wouldn't know what to say. I I love him too. He's like he's he's an intimidating. He seems like a very intimidating regular guy. So much confidence. Yet there's a charm. There's a charm oh, for about sure. Him. Oh hell yeah! Uh, Instagrams. You can find me at Pope Jesse Ventura. Alex at Mother Puncture. And my music. And check out any of my music. You can find me at Pander Monkey. Uh, all over the place. All right, Alex. You are clearly. Clearly picking the last song, but I'm all about compromise. So I, and also like, I love the album too. So I'm going to do a dying God coming into human flesh. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. See ya.